Tong Lin, a walk-around practice, something that we can walk around with. Um, it shouldn't surprise us that the Tibetan Buddhists have a special practice designed just to handle our reactions. And this practice is distinct from any sitting meditation we might do. And the practice is called Tong Lin, which in English translates to something like taking and sending. And it has to do with gradually becoming aware of our own reactions, you know, our likes and dislikes, and then disarming them. Tang Len is about becoming aware of our, our, our own reactions, our prejudices, likes, dislikes, and so on, and owning and clearly seeing them. We take in or become aware of our reactions one at a time as they happen. And we send out or respond to those reactions with openness and kindness. Literally, we breathe in what we react to, what we like or don't like, including the suffering of others. And we send back out whatever is good in us in return, the best thoughts, our best thoughts, and all the energy that we have within us. Now this concept takes some getting used to by Westerners. It took me quite a while. When I first heard about Tong Lin practice, I was shocked. It was literally everything that the various trance mediums and psychics that I had known said not to do. These same psychics had me washing my hands after every astrology reading I did in order to remove the negative energies my clients may have brought with them. And these negativities were uh, supposedly, they went down the drain with the water. And suddenly here the Buddha is telling me just the opposite. To breathe in and to absorb the negativity of my worst reactions. You know, all the suffering in the world, for instance. And to respond in kind, in return, with all the goodness within myself that I could muster. So I was confused. And let me tell you, I had to sit down and think about that for a very long time because it went against everything that I'd been taught up to the moment that Rinpoche uh, suggested as a practice I should do Tonglen and that it could benefit me greatly. It's not like I just casually read about Tonglen in some book. Instead, I had driven over 800 miles on one of the coldest days of the year with my entire family, including our youngest, who was only a year and a half old at the time. It was so cold as we drove up the steep mountain to the monastery where Rinpoche lived that I had to use a piece of cardboard to scrape a tiny hole on the inside of my windshield just to peer through. It was even cold inside our car. And for some reason, I, 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 I can't figure out, we'd never phoned ahead. So I don't know what I was thinking. No one knew that we were coming as we pulled up to this large old building that had at one time been a hotel high in the mountains above Woodstock, New York. Now it was the, it was the beginning of a monastery yet to be built. Uh, as we looked, it was mostly dark inside and the bitter wind on the mountains whirled around us as we stood in the doorway huddling together uh, my wife, myself, and our three kids. When someone finally opened the door, I, I, I stammered out that we had come to see Rinpoche, the Rinpoche. There are many kinds of Rinpoches, right? And I can only be eternally grateful that Rinpoche, who, that he, that Rinpoche was who Rinpoche is, which is a, a great master. Because um, in that dark night, he actually received us with the utmost grace and kindness. And we talked of many things, but that's an, you know, another story. And I bring it up here because Rinpoche did leave us with one request when we parted, and that was to, was to begin to learn the practice of Tang Len, which we're talking about here. And he gave us a small book called The Torch of Certainty. 
uh, and in it were the proper instructions for doing Tonglen. And so with that, we said goodbye and prepared to leave. We stayed that night in a small motel down in Woodstock, New York, one that had no regular furnace, but it had one of those little infrared heaters stuck in the wall. And it was there that Margaret and I turned the pages of the book Rinpoche gave us and first read about Tonglen. And what we read more or less frightened the bejesus out of us because it was it said very clearly to accept and to take into and to breathe in all of the negative reactions that we had and all the suffering in the world and breathe out and give back in return all of the best goodness that was in us. Believe me, folks, there was a seesaw moment when we teetered back and forth as to whether to accept Rinpoche's advice and to learn Tonglen or just to cut and run. All of this in a tiny motel room on one of the coldest nights of the year. You know, those days just after Christmas and before New Year, and some 800 long and frozen miles from our home in Michigan. It was probably it was only due to the sense of truth that we saw in Rinpoche, whom we had just met, we barely knew him, that we didn't just give up and get out. But the connection there from the first moment we met Rinpoche was so real, so genuine, that we just put all our eggs in that basket and took a chance. Of course, that chance, chance was well-founded, and we've worked with Rinpoche now for 30 years. Tonglen is a mind-training exercise that, in my opinion, is much easier to learn than standard sitting meditation. And, and aside from doing Tonglen on the cushion, like we do sitting meditation, we can do it throughout the day as things come up in our mind stream, and you know that they do. As I pointed out many years ago on that cold day that I recounted above, it was Tong Len that Rinpoche pointed out as the place to start. In the Buddhist textbooks, Tong Len consists of taking in, taking, breathing in all of the suffering and disharmony in the world, and sending out, breathing out, all the goodness that we can feel inside of us. This is why it's called taking and sending. And this taking in and then sending out is done over and over again until we have kind of neutralized the reaction that we find ourselves having. It could be fear, hatred, anything. Everything that we react to in this world, be it the suffering of others or any other reaction that we have is fuel for practicing Tonglen, all of it. And although the technique is traditionally presented as a way to virtually take on the sufferings that we see in the world around us, the net effect of this practice is to become aware and to neutralize our own reactions. We don't so much change the outside world through Tonglen as we change ourselves, we change our attitude toward the world, how we how how we respond, how we take things. And it can be a real game changer, at least it was for me. So if you're having any problems getting into sitting meditation or have not noticed much change from that practice, I sincerely suggest that you give Tong Len a try. It's very much a pay-as-you-go practice, meaning you get feedback and resolution from Tong Len on a reaction-by-reaction reaction basis. You can see the effect, and the progress um, is, is, in my opinion, much easier than in sitting meditation, at least for me.